I would like to tell you where my mother came from, mostly because it was important to her and therefore became important to me. It is my belief that one of the most important gifts you can give a child is to let them know where they came from, let them know they have a legacy. So you were born in 1930, right? And, and you lived off of Grand Boulevard. On Grand Boulevard. It was nice then. Her parents met and married and rented a basement house on Grand Boulevard across from the Henry Ford Hospital. My mother had a tremendous amount of pride in her parents and if she said it once, she said it a million times. They were the best parents that ever lived. When you think of the challenges they had making a family during the Great Depression, if there was any money issues, my mom would say, we never knew about them. How old were you when you moved from Grand Boulevard to... Ten. Ten. You were just 10 years old. And Grandpa, who worked for Packard, was able to buy a house. Uh, and where was that house? Uh, Philadelphia. In the late 30s, years after the worst of the Depression, the Brennans bought their first house, 143 West Philadelphia, a block off Woodward north of Wayne State. Back then, there was no such thing as a mortgage. They had to pay cash for their house. Grandpa was almost 50 years of age. According to Tom, Nancy, and Mom, this was the most happy house. Tell us a little bit about uh, your mother. What, what kind, how, what, how was she? What kind of person was she? She was a good person. A good person. Tell me a little more than that. Best person that ever lived. Wow, that's quite a compliment. Best mother, I should say. What kind of person was your dad? Sweet. What was his life like? He was a good man. Okay. And she was the boss. Her father came from Ireland. She loved him dearly. I mean, she, she would often say that, you know, best man ever had, you know, God ever made. And, and then uh, same thing with her mother. She intensely loved her mother, who was sweet, fun, jovial. None of them came from any money, but I think that she learned through her parents that love and bonding ship and, and nurturing is what makes life good. Were you close to your siblings? Mm, I think so. They were my best friends. A strong family love the Brennans held for each other set the framework for the following families. They enjoyed and supported each other throughout their entire lives. Life is funny that way. Your parents bring you into this world but usually leave early. You bring your children into this world, and then you leave early. It is your siblings that share all the life's phases with you. Together they lived a marvelous life. They relied on each other. So much so that at, uh, when my mom and my father met, they introduced, my dad introduced Pat Delaney, who was his younger brother, to my mom's younger sister, Nancy, and then the four of them got married. So when I say I'm close to my cousins with, uh, on the Delaney side, they, we actually share the same four grandparents. <laughs> That's a close family. <laughs> Where did you meet Grandpa? In a bar. In church. At church? Yeah. <laughs> Not that <sexual. laughs> true. They actually met in the bowling alley. They were on the bowling team. My dad was a cocky young 19 year old, right? Just full of himself. He did not have a, an easy upbringing, but he got through very well, you know, and he was just full of himself. That attracted my mom. She likes guys with confidence. And so they met at a very young age. She was 19 years old, and uh, it was off to the races rather quickly. She graduated in 48. By 1950, uh, they were married. And then my father went to the Korean War. And that during that while, before they left, they had Tim, the baby, who lived with my grandma 
and their family and a lot of love letters that we can share too between them just because they're just at that very young 19 21 years old my mom was young and naive and just full of love but that changed <laughs> what was your husband like yeah I was good <laughs> this letter is from my mom, dated December 5th, 1950, and it's to my father, Jerry, who is in Korea. I'm so happy to find out that you'll be home for Christmas. If I were to get all the money in the world, it wouldn't be better. I love you so very much. Yours, and I mean just yours, Maureen. P.S. Get in the mood because I'm going to love you to pieces when I see you. I just want to tell everyone that, you know, what a great mom she was. And she'll ask me to this day, you know, was I a good mom? I go, Mom, are you kidding me? You suck. <laughs> and then she laugh. I mean, <laughs> you know, and then, oh no, Mom, you're the greatest. And then she was. But she still has that sense of humor, that wittiness of her that I just love. I mean, everyone loves it. You have to love her. So my mom is probably what every child wants her mom to be. You realize that once you get older and all the things that she's done for us, sacrificed herself, she was always put us kids first, no matter what. And my kids are all good. They still are. I thought all I had to do was love them. I said when your father died, Nobody liked him, but he's a good man. <laughs> yes. It was the hardest time of her life. She was really mad. She felt like he had checked out early. And that was a real sad time for a couple of years. She was uh, sort of bitter. That was the only time I'd ever like see her cry or, you know, feel bad. But she did learn how to overcome it. You know, she did learn how, with the help from her family, her brother and her sister especially. But the whole while with my mom, she never ever complained to us. She never said, she never took the challenge on lightly. She, she took it on and at the same time she was able to maintain her own sanity and how she did that was by playing tennis. Do you have a favorite sport to play? Of course, tennis. You know, so every Sunday morning she would leave the chaos at home and go play tennis. So she always had a good way of maintaining her own sanity, keeping active, having her own set of things to do. She was very active throughout her life. Oh my God, tennis at 70, and just enjoyed it. She was very, very competitive. Now I, you know, I know, I thought we got our competitiveness from my dad, but no, no, we got it from my mom. The whole world changed between the 50s and the 60s. And along that came a woman's liberation. And my mom glammed onto that very strong, where she was a part of National Organization for Women, where she was actually a chair in there. She was small, but she was powerful. <laughs> and to have her in your corner was a major advantage. I am woman, watch me grow, <laughs> was, was the sort of the motto for the Delaney household. <laughs> I never heard a complaint. And she would work, you know, every day, three different jobs sometimes, sometimes just was always there. And on top of all that, she raised six kids. Made sure we got to our baseball games, make sure we got to, you know, basketball games or wherever we had to go. School PTAs. There's a funny story about that. I think it was my second grade teacher or third grade teacher at a, at a parent conference meeting. The teacher told my mom that I would never go to college. Well, this guy, this teacher didn't know it hit him. She jumped out of her chair, just ripped him. I mean, ripped him. She's about 5'2", and the guy was about six foot, and it didn't stop her. It was just, you don't mess with my kids. Right or wrong, she's our protector. Always has been. You know, and just one more funny story I'd like to say about my mom, because a big part of her now is, you know, she can't remember five minutes ago. She's been sick now, dementia now, for 14 years, um, but through all that time, she's not lost her sense of humor. When my mom was living with Maggie and I, 
And Maggie, it's a Saturday morning, we're sitting at the kitchen table and all of, and Maggie's getting ready to go shopping. And so while we're sitting there, she's going up past us quite a bit, right? Every time she'd go past, my mom would stop and say, where are you going, Maggie? Oh, I'm going shopping, Mom. And then she'd go, come back three seconds later, where are you going, Maggie? I'm going shopping, Mom. So that went on for like seven times, right? And finally, uh, Maggie's had enough and she said, Mom, I'm gonna have a rendezvous with my secret lover. And then, and this is my mom's sense of humor. She did not crack a smile. She looks at me and says, says well, I know why he keeps it a secret. <laughs> So she was just had that, she was just like, she, she was funnier than hell. I mean, just the, how she used those words. I know that came from her mother and father too, and her brother and sister. So that's my little story about her. What advice do you have for being a good parent? Um, and, uh, I'm gonna speak for uh, Maura and Margaret and Michael John and and all our cousins and everything, she was there too. You know, she didn't just limit herself to us kids. She, she was involved. That was so important to her, her family. That was number one. Number one. What about advice for being a good grandmother? I am a good grandmother. I have wonderful memories of very fun Christmas Eves at her house. There was always lots of love and laughs at her Christmas Eve celebrations and everybody all our friends, anybody who didn't have a place to go was always welcome. She has been really important to my life, probably more than anybody can think that they know, and I'm so grateful for her. You know, you guys your age want a picture of everything. No, this is not, this is a video. I want a recording of everything. Can I have it? And then you never look at it again. Hey, Nancy. Show, Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Had a little drink about an hour ago and it went right to my head. No Wherever I may roam, over land or sea or foam, you can always hear me singing this song. Show me the way to go home.